Shalini, can you please uh, introduce yourself? Uh, Ma'am, my name is Shalini and I have graduated from Chanakya National Law University, Patna. And thereafter, I have done my master's degree from Renaissance Law College, Indore. And right now, I'm preparing for judicial services examination. Okay. So, have you appeared for any uh, other exam other than this uh, Bihar Judicial Services? Uh, Ma'am, I've appeared for UP Judicial Services examination and I have cleared pre. Unfortunately, I was not able to uh, come for mains. Any specific reason? Sorry ma'am, I did not know as to why that has happened. I gave the exam, but uh, I could not clear that. Okay. So, you belong to Bihar only, right? Yeah. In which place? Uh, Patna. Patna. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me five popular things from Patna? Uh, five most interesting facts about Patna. Ma'am, there is a temple which is called as Mahavir Temple. And uh, here, uh, Hanumanji is uh, worshipped and uh, it belongs to a trust. Apart from that, uh, there are uh, there is a, a scorn temple that is recently uh, built. Uh, and uh, for, ma'am, this is what I can recall right now. Nothing else? Uh, no, ma'am. Other than that, uh, can you tell me some historical facts regarding Bihar? Uh, ma'am, uh, can I tell you something? Uh, Ma'am, actually, I uh, I am belonging from a place called Samastipur, but recently I have, my father has been transferred to Patna. So, even Samastipur so, has a very good history. Uh, so, can yes, you ma tell me about that? Ma'am, uh, Samastipur is famous for uh, many uh, temples, including Shiva temple. Hmm. And there are also places where Hindu-Muslim unity can be seen. And uh, uh, there are, uh, there is a, a uh, railway track where it uh, it connects various other uh, places uh, to north to east south as well uh, ma'am this is what i can re and there is a agricultural university which is called as pusa agricultural university which is named after uh, phipps uh, and uh, now due to the flood it has been uh, shifted to delhi okay so why do you want to become a judicial officer Ma'am, uh, I have always nurtured this urge of becoming, doing something good for the society. And I come from a very modest family background. For us, becoming a judge is not only a matter of uh, pride and prestige, but also getting an opportunity to work for those who are at the grassroots level. And uh, apart from that, I feel that it uh, will provide me enough financial security that will take care of my personal and familial needs. And it provides a good work-life balance, which I feel is an essential feature for any required or desired profession. That is why I have opted for this. So, uh, Abhi, you said that you belong to a place where becoming a judicial officer is a very big thing. So, that will be a very good opportunity for you. So, how will you uh, contribute towards this? Like, can you please justify ki how will you use this opportunity? Because uh, judicial officer ki jo ek position hai, aap isko bahut achhe se use karke, you can bring a change in the society. And because abhi aapne bola, I come from a background jo ki bahut modest hai. Mm -hmm. So, you can change this mentality. Mm -hmm. All right. Hmm. How can you do that? And how are you actually planning to do it? Ma'am, if uh, I have opted for judiciary, then I feel that I'll uh, be interacting with a lot of people who are coming from different economical and social backgrounds. With that, I will be able to connect with their real life problems and try to handle them in a tangible manner and do something meaningful for the society th who are those around me. So by handling diverse number of cases, I feel that uh, uh, I can uh, change and bring an impact to the society. So don't you think abhi jo aapne bataya, interacting with people, handling with that, diverse cases and everything, so we can do advocacy mein bhi kar sakte hai na? Then why not litigation? Ma'am, uh, I feel that uh, there are some considerations. First of all, uh, being a, coming from a first generation lawyer, I feel that there is not enough financial security. Apart from that, there are not a uh, diverse number of cases uh, and uh, uh, the two tenets, that is justice and equality, can only be done if I uh, have to become a judge into that respect. So I feel that uh, a judge can only bring a positive uh, change in the society. 
lawyers can only argue uh, and handle the cases but bringing an impact in the society or bringing justice can only uh, be done through judiciary because uh, it comes with uh, prestige power so this is why i feel that and what is your uh, definition of justice ma'am uh, justice means equality of rights uh, equal rights to all of the people who are around me so i feel if there is equal rights to all then justice can be done through that okay so like can you give your views about the current uh, justice system ki abhi jo current justice system hai do you see any kind of uh, lacuna or any kind of uh, gaps in it jisko aap fill karna chahoge ma'am i Firstly, feel are there any gaps okay ma'am i feel uh, there are some gaps like there is a lot of pendency of cases and i feel that there should be an effective case management system through digital recording virtual hearings can be done and apart from that i feel that punctuality should be observed and uh, not personal bias should be there so i think these are some of the considerations uh, which so has you agree yes, that yes. the current uh, justice delivery system is not efficient enough yes ma'am so you agree on that yes and by becoming a part of that uh, uh uh fraternity you will be able to do slightly better than what is being done right now yes ma'am okay theek hai over to you sir yes shalini aapke subjects kaun se kaun se option subject uh sir constitutional law and administrative law uh tort and contracts and apart from that hindu and muslim law okay आपने बताया भी यू वांट टू ब्रिंग जस्टिस यू वांट टू ब्रिंग इम्पैक्ट इन द हैव इम्पैक्ट इन द सोसाइटी कैसे करेंगे आप वो इम्पैक्ट सो बाय सॉल्विंग द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ द मार्जिनलाइज्ड सेक्शंस ऑफ द सोसाइटी बिकॉज़ आई फील दैट रियल डेवलपमेंट कैन बी डन ओनली थ्रू व्हेन वन रीचेस टू द ग्रास रूट लेवल सो कैसे एज अ जज कैसे करेंगे आप ये सो व्हेन आई बी हैंडलिंग डाइवर्स नंबर ऑफ केसेस सो द केसेस कम्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड्स पीपल ऑफ डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड्स हु आर सोशली और इकोनॉमिकली डिप्राइव्ड सो बाय हैंडलिंग डाइवर्स नंबर ऑफ केसेस थ्रू पीपल ऑफ डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड्स आई विल गेट टू नो अबाउट the real problems that they have and by having those problems i will try to handle them in a tangible manner by uh, following the tenets of equality and justice okay equality and justice kya hota hai equality kise kehte hain uh sir equality is given under article 14 of our constitution of india and it provides for equal equality uh, before law and equal protection of law uh, to the citizens of our to any person within the territory of india और क्या डिफरेंस होता है इक्वालिटी बिफोर लॉ एंड इक्वल प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ लॉ equality before law is a negative concept uh, and it says that every person uh, uh, should be uh, there, uh, there should be absence of privilege to every individual and all those coming into the group and equal, equal protection of law is that uh, those who are similarly situated should be provided with equal treatment equal circum equal treatment and equal circumstances so this is equality before law okay apart from this are there any provision in the constitution which provides for or which enhances or tries to you know calculate this equality and distribute the resources to the entire community in an equal manner uh sir uh article 38 uh, which talks about that there should be equal distribution of material resources and there should be prevention of article 38 uh, sorry sir uh, my bad article 39 a and b uh, a and d uh, talks about that uh, that there should be distribution of material resources and there should be prevention of any equality uh, in e- inequality with respect to any income or uh, opportunity okay so for example aap bata rahe hain ki yahan pe ek inequality nahi honi chahiye to jo resources hain for example property hello should this be distributed amongst the entire community is that what you are saying uh sir it uh, basically talks about distribution of material resources equally and there is a provision which is given under uh, article 39b which says that there should be distribution of property uh, private property if there is a need if the government feels that uh, there should be uh, 
equality of material resources then yeah, bc ke regarding ek judgment aaya supreme court ka aapne padha hai sorry sir on this point only what you have just said because Can the stance which was taken earlier by the supreme court has now changed सॉरी सर राइट नाउ नॉट एबल टू रिकॉल ओके एक जजमेंट मैंने पढ़ा था कल इट वाज रिगार्डिंग अलीगढ़ मुस्लिम यूनिवर्सिटी पढ़ा आपने वो सर थोड़ा सा देखा है क्या देखा आपने उसमें सर उसमें अजीज बादशाह के केस को ओवर रूल करने की कोशिश की गई है जहाँ पे ये बता रहे हैं कि लेजिस्लेचर के थ्रू जो वो एक्ट है कोशिश की गई है या करा गया करा गया है वो कह रहे हैं कि जस्ट बिकॉज वो एक्ट ऑफ लेजिस्लेचर के थ्रू आया है इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि हम माइनॉरिटी से उसको हटा दें क्योंकि माइनॉरिटी इस बीच के लिए नहीं होनी चाहिए जो रियल ऑब्जेक्टिव था माइनॉरिटी का टू प्रोवाइड एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट हैज़ टू बी टेकन इनटू कंसिडरेशन सो दे हैव ओवर रूल द केस ऑफ अजीज बादशाह केस सर आई थिंक इट इज़ स्टिल कंसिडर्ड एज अ नॉट अ माइनॉरिटी इंस्टीट्यूशन दीज आर हाँ यस सर अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस यू हैव सेड दैट योर सब्जेक्ट्स आर हिंदू लॉ एंड मुस्लिम लॉ एज वेल यस सर व्हाट इज द स्टेटस ऑफ अ हिंदू मैरिज आफ्टर कमिंग ऑफ द हिंदू मैरिज एक्ट सर अ हिंदू मैरिज इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी एज अ सेक्रमेंट and as per justice as per aran sharma uh, he has said that it is a permanent relationship of a man and a woman for any uh, physical social or spiritual needs and also procreation so it is considered but to be a sacrament are you saying it it is inseparable yes sir but now there is a provision for divorce there sir now it is considered to be sacrosanct because uh, due to the societal changes and needs it has considered that it is both uh, considered to be religious sacrament as well as contractual if uh, it happens so that so marriage is a contract as well yes it is a contract as well because there is a concept of kanyadan age of the parties is also taken into consideration yeah, kanyadan kise kehte hain कन्यादान वेर द ब्राइड ग्रूम इज गिफ्टेड बाय देयर पेरेंट्स टू द ब्राइड ग्रूम्स फैमिली टू द ब्राइड ग्रूम्स फैमिली द ब्राइड द ब्राइड ग्रूम इज गिफ्टेड एज कंसिड्रेशन एज अ फॉर्म ऑफ कंसिड्रेशन टू द ब्राइड्स फैमिली टू द ब्राइड ग्रूम्स फैमिली यू थिंक ब्राइड ग्रूम इज गिफ्टेड टू द ब्राइड ग्रूम्स फैमिली ब्राइड इज गिफ्टेड टू द That is the meaning it is of considered. Kanyana. It is considered that they are gifted as a consideration, but in real sense, it is not that. But it is seen as that uh, she is gifted. Are you sure about this? Where have you read this? Where so, is it given? So I've read it somewhere that uh, because it is, it shows some features of a contractual nature. So this might happen. Apart from that, age of the parties, uh, whether they are competent or not. these are also taken into okay, consideration is consent is consent of the parties required for a valid marriage yes sir consent of the parties is required for a valid marriage where is it provided um sir right now i'm not able to recall any particular section any provision that you i think it's a section 5 of the hindu marriage act kya hai section 5 sir uh, it says that there should be uh, proper consent age of the parties has to be taken into consideration it has to be within prohibited degrees and uh, it has to be within prohibit it has to be uh, not within prohibited degrees and uh, not uh, uh, within the sapenda any other point age of the parties is there an unsound mind is also uh, taken into consideration that the person should not be of unsound mind so where is consent written here सेक्शन फाइव में कंसेंट कहाँ पे आप एक पॉइंट भूल गए खैर मोनोगामी बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट कंसेंट कहाँ पे यस सर सॉरी सर माय बैड अच्छा आप डिफरेंस बता सकते हो मुझे एक 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 सिचुएशन जिसको हम इनवैलिड मैरिज कहेंगे अंडर हिंदू लॉ और जिसको हम वॉइड मैरिज कहेंगे डिफरेंस इन दैट सर इफ अंडर सेक्शन इलेवन इट सेज इफ अ पर्सन Uh, marries uh, the other who is within uh, prohibited degrees or within the sapenda then it can be considered as void marriage as per section 11 but as per section 12 uh, about bigamous marriage sir uh, bigamous marriage is uh, is also considered void okay 
and what is invalid marriage then sir invalid marriage is that uh, uh, first it is considered valid but uh, at the option of the other party the other party can uh, dissolve the marriage that is invalid marriage yes sir i, I feel that okay and what is voidable marriage then voidable marriage uh, is that the other party has an option to uh, make the marriage or to dissolve the marriage because of some uh, considerations like impotency uh, pre marriage pregnancy uh, consent out of fraud so these are the things so what is the difference between invalid marriage and voidable marriage aapne dono mein same bataya mujhe invalid marriage uh, are the marriages which are not valid for, from the very inception so they are considered to be invalid marriages and voidable is that the uh, marriage is valid but uh, later it is if it is found that it is within the conditions of section 12 then it is considered voidable at the option of one party okay, so invalid marriage is void from the very inception yes sir so how are they different this this is my good question how are they different from a void marriage in so the section case? 11 talks about void marriage and section 12 talks about voidable marriage right my question to you is what is the difference between a void marriage and invalid marriage sorry sir i'm not able to recall right now okay chaliye theek hai so we have completed your interview